The following program is a Greenlight Main production being brought to you in part by Bangor Savings Bank. Welcome to the Greenlight Main College Edition. This season is shaping up to be the best yet. The students are innovative, socially responsible, and they have what it takes to bring their company to the next level. The top three will share more than $20,000 in cash to invest in their companies, but the connections made and the exposure is worth so much more. And speaking of connections, we're going to talk to some great connectors. I'd like to welcome our judges. First up, we have Martha Johnston from the Finance Authority of Maine. Tell us about what you're working on right now. Oh, thanks, Julian. Um, well, first of all, I'm really pleased to be here and hear all these wonderful, innovative ideas at the Finance Authority of Maine. In particular, what I do is I work on helping people pay for college. So it's very relevant to our college edition, um, and we're always looking for innovative ways to also bring financial education to that conversation. So that's a big part of, of what we're working on lately these days. Wow, we look forward to learning more about that. And next up, we have Jamie Dowdy from our premier sponsor, Bangor Savings Bank. Welcome. Welcome, thank you very much for having me. I'm very excited to be here. So uh, I'm the Chief Innovation Officer of Bangor Savings Bank, and uh, currently we're working on uh, what's called programmable payment technology. Uh, we've just recently started our own fintech uh, and uh, having some success with that. So it's been an exciting run. Interesting. Okay, and rounding off our panel is Kay Karina from the Department of Economic and Community Development. Welcome. Thank you. So excited to be here today. Um, right now, we're currently working on recruiting employers for the Maine Career Exploration Program, as I am the program manager for, and again, providing those paid work experiences to young people ages 16 to 24 to really get them into the community, really getting them with those businesses that are going to carry them forward into the Maine community. So excited to be here today. Awesome. What a great program. Okay, we are about to begin, and our first pitch is from Thomas College. We have Cole Ellis, who is very concerned about the air that you breathe and our environment. Whenever you're ready, you just take it away. Okay. <clears throat> so as you may know, Maine reached its goal for the installation of 100,000 heat pumps two years ahead of schedule. Now, Governor Janet Mills just set a new target, 175,000 additional heat pumps installed by the year 2027. Now, Bloomberg has even gone to say that Maine is the heat pump capital of the United States. Hi, my name is Cole Ellis, and I am the founder and owner of Keep It Clean Heat Pumps. Now, you yourself might have a heat pump, or maybe your neighbor has a heat pump, but I'm sure you've thought about one. But have you ever thought, how are these things cleaned? Manufacturers, installers, even Efficiency Maine say they need to be cleaned. But unfortunately, they don't clean themselves. I'm in the business of cleaning heat pumps. So we are the professional heat pump cleaners of the Midcoast area. We offer a deep cleaning service for residential and commercial applications to save you time and offer peace of mind knowing your air is clean and your heat pump running efficiently. Now, we kind of, we meet our customers in a different fashion. We meet our customers at a, at a level where they can understand what we're going through. I've worked with hundreds of customers and almost every manufacturer, which allows me the ability to communicate in a way that's easy to understand at least on my process. Our customer service doesn't just stop there. We offer to lessen the burden of our customers and reach out to them year by year when their heat pump needs to be cleaned and serviced, taking one more thing out of their busy lives. Now you don't just have to take my word on it. Here's a customer's review on Google. Cole did an amazing job with my heat pump a few weeks ago. I was excited to get rid of the mildewy smell, but got so much more. Our heat pump went from barely heating the house when set to 70 to heating it comfortably at 62. Cole explained each part of his process and was super thorough, cleaning all parts of the inside and outside unit. Can't recommend him enough. So thank you, Julia. We appreciate all of our customers. Next, I'm gonna show you a video of what it looks like to actually clean the indoor portion of the unit. So this is before we start our cleaning process. As you can see, we've got dust and, and mold residue everywhere. This is the process of cleaning our eco-friendly cleaning solution throughout the unit, and it goes into a bagger. 
And that's the water after the fact. So that's all mold, dust, and debris. And here's what it looks like when we're finally done cleaning it. I'm here to ask for help with the scaling of my business. Our business is one person, well, one employee and myself working from my Subaru Crosstrek. I need to purchase a utility van in order to scale up. We have the proper equipment to do a good job, but if we have that, it'll just bring us to the next level. We need to purchase ad space on Google, some on Facebook, and increase our public relations on social media platforms. This is where Greenlight Maine can help my small, Maine-based business. As of now, we reach most of our customers through a collaborative effort with heat pump installers, electricians, um, property managers, and even some general contractors who build homes. Thank you so much, and remember, if your heat pump is running poorly, Keep It Clean Heat Pumps is here for you. Excellent pitch, nice job. You are gonna be so busy. All right, Martha, kick us off with the questions. Okay, so I'll ask you, what's your vision in three years for your company? Okay, so my vision in three years is to have several different uh, operating facilities. I'd like to have continue my one in Searsport. I'd like to operate out of the Rockland, Rockport area, and another in the Ellsworth area, keeping it on the coast where there's minimal competition with installers and other cleaning companies. Great, thank you. Jamie. Yeah, nice job, Cole. Um, I have lots of questions. Uh, it seems fairly labor intensive. Uh, in addition to, I think some of the manufacturers or some of the installers also offer cleaning services. How do you compete with them and what's your differentiator? So as we know, this market, as we touched on before, is growing insurmountably. So what we're seeing is we see a lot of installers join the marketplace, be in the marketplace for a while, you know, install 50 to 100 units, and then they drop out because of the bigger competitors, right? And these bigger competitors have long turnaround times, a lot of people working on it, and poor quality control, if I may. So I offer to fix that, that problem, pick up those people that may not have an installer who can come help them, and move forward with their cleaning of their units. Okay. Amazing. This is incredible. Um, I'm wondering uh, about some of the connections in the Mid-Coast area to some young people who may want to learn about how to do this in their HVAC programs. What is your vision for potentially scaling this so that maybe some young people could learn um, from you about this? So yeah, uh, we'd like to try to have a training program for maybe students that are in the HVAC industry so they can start practicing with heat pumps and maybe learn the ins and outs of them in a less stressful manner. What a great idea, great pitch. You are gonna do so well. We need to take a short break and hear from our sponsors, but our next company is also about your safety, so don't go away, we'll be right back. Come on over. At Bangor Savings Bank, we understand that to deliver the best banking experience possible, meeting people where they are matters. That's how we fulfill our fundamental promise that you matter more. We are more than just a bank. We are friends, neighbors, and tireless advocates for the communities we serve. Wherever our customers are in their financial journey, we are there with them every step of the way. Right into the lens, okay. Famous brands, rugged quality, and the best values anywhere. This is where you start your future, where you find the skills you need to succeed and the support to help you on the way where you will find the power of innovation and creativity and the challenges to help you grow. Find a beautiful environment and a community that inspires, where you can turn your passion into your profession. This is where you start your life. This is where you belong. Thomas College. Welcome back to the Greenlight Main College Edition. Our next company is all about keeping students safe. From Maine Maritime Academy, we have Kylie Coxon with Safety First. Whenever you're ready, just look right at the judges and have fun. Thank you, Julian. My name is Kylie Coxon and I attend Maine Maritime Academy. 
My company is based around the idea of keeping you safe when you're out either at a bar or parties. My idea is having test strips that you can simply dunk into a drink and then pull out and you can see if there's any date rape drugs or any other types of drugs in the, um, in the beverage. I have talked to a few, um, few experts and they think this idea is feasible. They think it's going to be perfectly fine to come up with. I also think that this would be a great idea for the colleges of Maine to implement, either buying it, buying it in bulk and then di distributing it to students or um, having individual students buy it. Growing up, I was very sheltered. I come from a very small town in Connecticut, and I didn't really learn about any of this until I got to college. And that's when I decided, like, why can't students go have fun without having that worry? For example, one in every three sexual assault cases are caused by date rape drugs. So I want to start help s stop this. I also think that this would be a good product because it is wearable and compact. I would have it be a small keychain device. I could even have it look like a lipstick or another item so it's very discreet and easy to use. And the final thing is I would have it have a little code so you can easily tell if you're like what the colors are, what, how it works. So I ask you now, um, are you ready to help take the next step to help keep people safe? And if you are, why not start today? Absolutely. And I think, why hasn't this been invented before? Great job. Okay, Martha. Yeah, so my question is about the market. So is your market colleges and universities? Is your market individuals? What, what do you envision your market to be? I believe that the best market would be colleges because being a business to business company is often easier than trying to go business to consumer. And I also think that it's very useful for colleges and it honestly would help colleges not deal with the repercussions in the long run. Good answer. answer. Good answer. Jamie. Yeah, I've got a couple. Um, in terms of any competitors, do you have any competitors in the marketplace? Or are you aware of any of this existing somewhere else? Yes, there actually is a competitor. Um, there's a nail polish where it's like you dip the nail polish in the drink and it turns a different color. But my product would be gender neutral as it's just a test strip and you can simply dip it in and pull it out. So you don't have to worry about the hassle of painting your nails or like having it seem to one gender. It's gender fluid. Mm -hmm. And then the other one is just the price. What is the, what is the, do you have any idea on what the price might be for not just the packaging of the lipstick or the, the, or the key fob, but the actual indicator itself? The actual yeah, so I, I would have to research. I would have to do lots of research and testing to come up with the product. But my hope is to keep it very affordable. Um, best um, case scenario would be colleges buying it in bulk. So I would want to keep it, the individual test strips as something you can replenish. And I want those to be very affordable because I don't think safety should have to come with that big of a cost. I can see a lot of parents being interested in this. So thank you. Okay. This is fantastic. Um, do you see in the next few years, you know, as you're working through this, seeing some education going along with this um, for young people who are coming into college for the first time, things to expect, um, things to potentially know about um, as this as a resource for freshman interest groups, um, step up programs from high school to college, you know, once you're turning, you know, 20 to 21, where do you see that going? Um, I definitely see it as a potential for education. I've been involved with lots of educating and community service in the past, and I really think that that's a big part of a business is community outreach. Great. We have time for one more question. Oh, okay, great. Um, so a lot of times with business development, we talk about milestones, but what do you think a next step is, or next two steps, like in the real immediate? Okay, so the next step, I've talked to some experts, and one professor at UMaine, one um, scientists at a laboratory it's just to make sure it's feasible and they think that it is so my next step would be researching and developing and then after that it would start it would be gathering funding all right let's keep going with the questions Jamie. yeah just one more similar to that in just in terms of what have you thought about staff what would be required for you know employees of the company um, I think to start I would want to keep it small um, I think it would be an online company to start so probably just the people developing and making the product, a couple sh people shipping it out, and then obviously like accountants and 
um, marketing. Okay. Awesome. One last one. Um, do you see as you're rolling this out to the colleges, do you see the colleges potentially buying them in bulk and then um, finding ways to sell individually to students? Or do you foresee um, just an access point for students? The college has it. It's free to them um, on the college campus. What do you see happening? Um, it's hard to speak for colleges because I would say I would like it to be just distributed like an, an, as you said, an asset that someone can easily get access to. But I also know that a lot of the colleges would probably want to make a profit. A lot to consider there. Yes, lots of options. Well, you have done such an amazing job already, done so much research. So we just wish you the best of luck. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to hear from our judges. So don't go away. We'll be back right after this. With so many Medicare options, it can be confusing. At Martin's Point, we make your Medicare choices easy. Our all-in-one Medicare plans cover doctor's visits, hospital stays, and prescription drugs, dental, vision, and eyewear, fitness and wellness reimbursements, with premiums and co-pays as low as $0. As one of the highest rated Medicare Advantage plans in New England, you can feel confident you're covered. Call or visit us online today to request your free Medicare Made Simple Guide. Whether you're a small business or a big business, whether you're cutting edge or looking at a traditional industry in a whole new way, whether you're on the coast, in the city, a small town, wherever, if you're an organization here in Maine, if you want to innovate and if you want to grow, we want to support you. We're the Maine Technology Institute. Social engagement is so important for anyone in business. Engaging with others is the way to become more well-known and it's how you build your personal brand. The key to branding yourself is the impact you have on others, whether or not they know, like, and trust you. So ask yourself, am I known for what I do? Am I known for good things? Do people like me? Do I follow through on the things I say I will do? Do they trust me? Am I the one who others will think of when it comes time to make a referral? Or if I ask for a reference, will others volunteer to give me a good reference for a new job? Whether it's online or in person, the most important component of social engagement is showing people you care about them. So don't just talk about yourself. Listening matters a lot. Try to find something you have in common because that's where the magic happens. Welcome back to the college edition of Greenlight Maine. It's time for our judges to weigh in and it's important for our folks at home to know that you spend a lot of time with them off camera and learn a lot about them. So if they're, you're hearing something that they might have not heard in their pitch, that is why. So let's start with Cole, only because he pitched first, but both companies really have solutions to big problems, right? Mm -hmm. Right, right. So I think what really struck me with Cole was that it is very Maine focused, right? So he, his market was sized for Maine. He had all these statistics around where we are currently with heat pump installations, accelerating the goal. So that was something that really left a big impression on me when I thought about Cole's innovation in his business. Yeah, I, I really appreciated Cole. One, the business is up and running. Uh, it's working today. It's in the market. I think it hits a couple of notes relative to not just the main, but also the sustainability um, and, and quality. Yeah. Um, so very impressed with him, not only as a young man, but just in terms of the, the program itself. And I, I actually see some extensions from this. We talked about, it, yes, it's heat pumps, but you could even go into whole home generators, things of that nature with that kind of approach. 
I appreciated how thorough he was really about his process, um, really how he's developing this um, and really taking it from, you know, the idea to having an additional person that he's working with and himself. Um, I do have questions around kind of the um, scalability around like it is labor intensive as we mm -hmm. talked about. Mm -hmm. um, and what does that look like over time? Um, I'm interested to see too a little bit more of how is this being implemented in the mid coast area and how could this affect some other places Places as well. Um, very, very, very innovative. Yes, you learn that he's from Searsport. He has a lot of referrals from contractors and things like that. And very specific ask in his pitch of what he needed for his truck. And he also needs to hire people, which is great. That's what we want. Um, okay, so let's talk about Kylie now. What an amazing idea. <laughs> that that is an incredible idea. I, I will say um, I was blown away with the innovation. I think she mentioned it herself. You know, it's too bad we have to think about these things, but we do have to think about these things. And she's obviously a very smart young woman who's thinking about the best way to accomplish that. So I think she has an incredible idea. I think there's a lot of benefit for colleges and universities. You know, this is something they want to make sure that all of their students stay safe. So I do see that it helps not only the individual, but also the campus community. I think there's a, a lot of uh, positives here with that business idea. What an enticing tool for colleges to attract students, mm -hmm. offering that to any student that, you know, is comes on campus. Right. Yeah. Uh, very impressive uh, young lady. Um, I also, off camera, I was able to ask her that it's not just for young women, but it's also for young men as well. So there's a broader application, uh, very scalable. I mean, it hits, the, hits it right on the mark in terms of scalability. And to your point about uh, colleges and parents would have a real interest in this. So um, yeah, very impressive. Yes, parents are definitely gonna sleep better at night knowing that this is out there. Correct. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I really appreciated, um, you know, Kylie talking about the discrete nature of this um, and being able to find safety, you know, um, within whatever social situation you may be in um, and to have that discreteness to it. Um, I really also appreciated really her perspective on making sure that we understood the statistics around why this is necessary. It's really hard to hear and it's really something that, um, you know, as a as somebody who works with young people um, and thinking about their futures and making sure that they have that safety and they have that option for themselves. Um, and I really appreciate all the thought and all of the next steps that she's going to take for this. Nice. OK, so we have time. You both said this is going to be a really hard decision. Yeah. So if they were to make it to the finals, what would you want to see from them? You know, I think from Kylie, I would want to spe see that specific ask. I'd like to understand um, very clearly what winning Greenlight Maine would allow her to do in the further development of her idea, because it's clear that her idea is a little bit more nascent and she's got more research to do. Um, so I, I think that's what I'd like to know. Nice. Yeah, I think I agree with that. I think it's I, I, my mind as she was speaking, there's a lot of boxes that are not checked. Uh, and so she's still got a lot of legwork to do, even, even not just down to the actual mechanism, uh, but also the science itself. Um, so that would be intriguing for me to know. And then I think with Cole is understanding his thoughts around the sustainability piece of it, mm -hmm. um, because it, it is labor intensive, mm -hmm. and I think you're gonna have to provide some level of scalability, um, and then maybe his thoughts around how to extend the business into other areas as hopefully more energy efficient opportunities come down. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I think for both of them, um, some next steps I would like to see is really mapping out where are they going with these ideas? Um, are they going in particular to um, houses that were just built within new developments um, to make sure that these residents in these areas know, you know, for um, Cole's idea that this um, that this is available and for, you know, for Kylie looking at some of the college data on what is happening on campus um, and really making sure that, you know, the next step of reaching out to these places, what does that look like? And then also too, for both of them, the um, impact on Maine, I'd love for them to mm -hmm. dive into what does this look like in your community? What does this look like as it starts to get a bit more, you know, regional, as this starts to get a bit bigger within Maine? Um, I'd love to see a map of what this impact could look like. Right. Potential to be the next great Maine story. Mm -hmm. All right. So thank you so much for your thoughtful comments. Excellent job. All right, we're going to take a very short break. When we come back, we're going to find out who is moving on. Don't go away.
I am truly awestruck by the innovation that exists. Fame has fundamentally been a part of keeping the business community here resilient and robust. Our role is to help. Come in. To have people in your corner that will guide you through the whole process is really helpful. When they say, hey, we believe in this, it's a real boost to confidence. Fame works for Maine, helping businesses and lenders create a bright economic future. It's about helping Maine grow. Albin, Randall, and Bennett committed to providing accounting solutions to Greenlight Maine startups, working with businesses and organizations that operate locally and nationally. ARBCPA.com. At Bangor Savings Bank, we understand that to deliver the best banking experience possible, meeting people where they are matters. That's how we fulfill our fundamental promise that you matter more. We are more than just a bank. We are friends, neighbors, and tireless advocates for the communities we serve. Wherever our customers are in their financial journey, we are there with them every step of the way. This is where you start your future, where you find the skills you need to succeed and the support to help you on the way, where you will find the power of innovation and creativity and the challenges to help you grow. Find a beautiful environment and a community that inspires, where you can turn your passion into your profession. This is where you start your life. This is where you belong. Thomas College. Welcome back to the college edition of Greenlight Maine. The decision is always tough, but today it was just a little bit tougher. The good news is you can lose your round and still go to the finals because it's based on scoring. So that's a little bit help for our judges, but it's time to find out who the winner is. So judges, I'm gonna count you down. Three, two, one. And that means Keep It Clean gets the green light. Congratulations to Cole, he is moving on in the competition. Well, that's all the time that we have for today. We appreciate your feedback, so please keep the comments coming and you can see all of our episodes on greenlightmain.com. We wanna thank our judges, our student entrepreneurs, our amazing crew, and Thomas College for organizing the entire college edition. We'll see you right back here next week with two more companies. Have a successful week. Congratulations. Greenlight Maine would like to thank our premier partner, Bangor Savings Bank, our corporate partners, and our sponsors. Thank you.